Life, Culture and Current Events from a Biblical Perspective, 2020 on Vision. Well, in times of relative peacetime and when we can appreciate what we think is freedom, even though freedom might be disappearing, good to reflect on some of those Christian champions of history who loom large who've been in different contexts at different times, but have carried the name of Christ, even in the shadow of the rise of dreadfully tyrannical regimes. Some of us will recognize a brother and sister who were born a hundred years ago, the Scholl family name that came out of Germany in the rise of Nazism. Bill Muhlenberg, Christian cultural commentator, has been reflecting on this story and joins us once again today. Hello, Bill. Welcome back to 2020. Oh, it's good to be here. Bill, it is a famous story. Not everybody will be familiar with the Scholl name, but it's commemorated around the nation of Germany quite frequently. Yeah, well, it's a name or a name of a family that should be known better. They're certainly, as you say, well known in Germany because of what they did to resist the Nazis. Uh, Today, um, we have squares and uh, buildings named after Hans and Sophie Scholl. We have coins and stamps that commemorate them, all because of what they did as very young people. So I've been writing about them this week, in fact, on the 9th of May, exactly 100 years ago. Sophie Scholl was born. Uh, Her brother was a few years older. She and a few others became involved in resistance to the Nazi movement. And for doing that, they were all killed quite young by the Nazis. So a very inspiring story of Christian young people Uh, putting their faith into action and pain with their lives as a result. So if we go back to the 1930s, Bill, Sophie Mm. and her brother Hans had both joined what was known as the Hitler Youth. So they were signing up to support Adolf Hitler. Yeah, well, as did most people, certainly a lot of young people, but most Germans thought, oh, finally, get out of our doldrums, uh, For good or ill, uh, the result of the First World War put Germany in a pretty tough spot. A lot of people resented that. They wanted to see Germany made great again, to kind of borrow a more recent phrase. And uh, so, yeah, a lot of people thought, oh, Hitler is the solution. He's the one who's going to turn things around. But thankfully, Hans and Sophie Scholl's parents knew better. They were committed Christians. And they tried to warn their kids that, no, 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 this is not something you want to give your Christian uh, imprimatur to. This is a a movement that's decidedly anti-Christ. We cannot, as Christians, support this. So in a little while after that, they did start to see the light. And uh, at first it was Hans, her older brother, and a few others who started what became known as the White Rose Movement, and then soon thereafter, uh, Sophie joined as well. So we might thank God for Christian parents who could give some guidance to their children who were moving towards joining uh, what was going to be the Hitler Youth. And so they took what was in their capability, what was in their hands, and began to produce leaflets and that's where as you say bill the name white rose came from because one of those leaflets was about a white rose yeah it's uh well it was their as you say their version of i guess social media they didn't have facebook and all the rest uh they you know all they could do is try to run off leaflets in the privacy of their own homes Uh, They were both university students at the time in Munich, so mainly distributed these pamphlets to students, put some in the post, uh, mailed them here and there, so they got as far as throughout Germany and parts of Austria, and all up in the very short time that the White Road movement was there, they produced six of these pamphlets, all asking people to think, to question not to just run with uh, the state and whatever it says, but to think. 
and think about how bad things are progressing under the Nazis. So they were doing their bit. They weren't under any delusions of grandeur. They knew full well that, you know, it was going to take tanks and guns. It's going to take whole armies, the allies, to stop Hitler. But they knew they could do their bit to sound the alarm, to be a conscience for the nation, to alert others. Uh, you know, just as Wilberforce earlier in England had tried to be the conscience of a nation in regards to the slave trade, these handful of brave young Christian people uh, knew they had to do something. They had to speak out, even if the consequences would be quite severe. I wonder if you've got an impression, Bill, if we were talking about our modern time and here in Australia, the idea that activism, which sometimes is aligned with an extremism, but here we are talking about a couple of young activists who were acting on that advice from their parents. That's not a good way to go. And clearly then, Uh, so convicted about that advice and their Christianity that they went and technically here became really a Christian activist. And I wonder whether you've got any thoughts about the passion that there might be in young people today, whether it's there in the way it ought to be. Yeah, well, that's it. Um, Having the right cause to be active about, uh, we can often get... A lot of young people today getting involved in things that are probably not the greatest of causes or even the wrong causes. So that's the first thing. It's one to be one thing to be an impressionable young person who gets all excited about various issues, but uh, sometimes they can be the wrong issues. Uh, I was a case in point back in my youth as a hippie, part of the radical left, you know, anti-America, anti-government, anti-this, anti-that. So I was an idealistic youth, but I think I was on the wrong bandwagon, which I learned later as I became a Christian. But in this case, these guys were quite right. Uh, Something like Hitler and the destruction of everything they knew and loved had to be resisted, even at great cost. So they only did manage to get about six of these pamphlets uh, out altogether. And it was only a small group, maybe five other students and one professor. But, of course, soon enough, uh, the Nazis caught them. They were interrogated. And just a few days later, uh, Hans and Sophie and one other were put to death, beheaded uh, in prison in Germany. And then a few days later, the others were rounded up and had the same treatment. So here was this little voice knocked out. But it's a voice, as I say, even now, a hundred years on from her birth, Germans uh, pretty much all around the country know of these great young people and what they did. And uh, so I concluded my article, uh, you know, looking at the words of Christ and also some moving words by people like Leonard Ravenhill, when he talks about is the life you are now living worth Christ dying for. You know, what are we here for? What are we doing? So many Christians seem to be spinning their wheels. They just want to make it in the world. Good job. Uh, Nice new car, new TV, new vacation, whatever it is. And they seem to have little or no understanding of the self-sacrificing life of the Christian. Christ sacrificed everything for us. We're called to do the same. And to look at these very young and brave young German people who did just that, gave everything for a greater cause, hopefully that will inspire all of us Christians today. What are we living for? What's our priority in life? Uh, What are we going to be commended for one day when we stand before our Lord? Well, that old saying, if it's not worth dying for, it's not worth living for, Mm. clearly these two young people uh, recognized that their Christian faith up against the major propaganda machine of the Nazis, they had to do something. They recognized that it would take the military uh, to be able to come up against the Hitler regime, but they did what they could do with what they had in their hand. Yep, and uh, we're much the same today. We obviously don't have power to 
overthrow governments. We don't have tanks and guns, but we do have, oh, well, means of communication like they did. They did pamphlets. We can use the social media. We can use the Internet. We can use all kinds of things for a time when there's a need to speak out. And uh, sadly, many have noted that even here in the West, the governments of the day are getting more and more uh, uh, obsessed with power and control. Uh, some basic freedoms and human rights are being uh, taken away. Churches even being closed in the name of keeping us safe. So in some ways, it's not the same, but we're heading in kind of uh, similar ground where Christians again have to think. Um, you know, where is the state heading? Is it getting way too much power? Is the church suffering as a result? Do I have an obligation to speak out, to warn others, and to try to keep important goods like religious freedom from slowly but surely being snuffed out? So we can certainly learn from these two young people and others like them and uh, hope and pray that we don't get into such uh, precarious times as they had to go through. Although if we don't learn the lessons of history, you never know, we may end up repeating them. Of course, we could say, Bill, that could never happen in Australia, but I know you're taking Mm -hmm. a bigger view and looking at Western nations as one and recognizing the rise of big brother statism and some of those things that do suppress the voice of the church ultimately can become the voices that make church the enemy of the state and therefore uh, Christians just like those two uh, then potential uh, risk that sort of prosecution and even in the case of the Nazis there of course it was execution just to uh, make a fine point. I know that some listeners will want to read this story and understand a little bit deeper the story of the White Rose Movement as you reflect on those two young Germans, Hans and Sophie Scholl. You'll be able to read Bill's latest piece when you go to billmuhlenberg.com or you can simply Google Culture Watch one word. Bill, thanks so much for a great insight today about a couple of historic figures here on 2020. Thanks again. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.